Hello everybody, my name is O'Tyler and I'm here to ask and answer one simple question. Can you game on a mouse that costs £25? The answer? Yes. Yes you can. A company called Techware reached out to me asking if I would be interested in reviewing their budget-friendly, high-performance gaming mouse. Now, at first, I did have my doubts about a mouse at this price point being viable for competitive play. However, I've sat down with this thing for about a week now, and it has exceeded my expectations, and it's definitely a mouse that I would recommend for entry-level PC games. Before I get into the actual review, I do want to address the elephant in the room. If you are a regular viewer of my content, you might realise I'm in a slightly different environment. Um, I'm going to touch up on this on a follow-up video. The Talk Plus has a very minimalistic packaging, um, as to be expected at this very low price point. Despite the mouse only costing £25, it does boast an impressive range of features, including a high-end top optical sensor, mechanical switches and a paracord. The first thing that caught my eye about this mouse was the cable itself. It did seem very soft and flexible, and I'm going to show you a bit of B-roll footage here to compare it against the Razer Viper Ultimate's cable and the older Glorious Model O cable. Um, what did surprise me, however, is that there is a included pair of replacement mouse feet that you can find in there. In addition to this, you also get a cover for the USB cable. On first impressions, the mouse does feel rather cheap, obviously using an ABS plastic to save on cost. The actual build quality of the mouse itself is rather impressive, however. I couldn't seem to get the shell to flex or squeak in any place. The mouse has an interesting collection of buttons, including two buttons for changing DPI, three side buttons, and a button on the bottom of the mouse that you can use to change the RGB. Another interesting fact is that the cable on this mouse comes out of one of the sides of the mouse. It's a characteristic that I've seen in some other cheap mice and it leads to having the scroll exposed on the bottom. One suggestion that I do have for Techware here is that they should think about the length of the plastic piece that actually protrudes from the mouse. Um, where it's that little bit longer it tends to sag on the bottom and can lead to the power cord itself dragging along the pad. Perhaps on a future revision they should consider allowing this piece to be angled or to use a shorter piece entirely. The shape on the Tilt Plus itself is an ergonomic design and it feels very similar to a Zowie EC2B. However, because the mouse uses some safer proportions, it does feel a little bit smaller in the hand. I have a hand size of 16x9 and it fills the back of my palm just fine. However, it's worth bearing in mind that because the right hand side of the mouse is a little bit less flared out, um, it can feel a little bit smaller. It's also worth noting that where the front of the mouse caves inwards, it does leave a little bit less room for your ring finger and your pinky finger to grip onto. The side grips on this mouse use a shiny um, textured plastic. Being used out of the box, they felt fine for gripping my fingers, um, have with a little bit of use, they are starting to feel a little bit more slippery. A consideration of mine would be to use the same matte plastic that can be found on the top of the shell, as this will stop the gloss and the matte coatings clashing with each other, and should also help with gripping the mouse. The mouse uses a 3327 sensor, as you can imagine, being a top optical sensor, the mouse performs flawlessly in game and I've had no issues with tracking or with mouse acceleration. The mouse could be considered to be on the heavier side, being a 97 gram mouse, um, however it's worth bearing in mind obviously if you are playing FPS games, sometimes having the additional weight can help when making micro adjustments in game. The mouse uses mechanical Huano switches for mouse 1 and 2, and whilst this may not be the most exciting switch you can find on a mouse, they provide a very good reliability and have never been known to have double clicking issues. Speaking of which, here's a quick sound test.
The scroll wheel is also quite good considering the price point. It has a smooth scroll whilst also being rather quiet. You also receive software which you can download online. This lets you choose from three different profiles, RGB lighting, DPI settings with the option of changing the DPI indicator colour. You also get some mouse settings such as sensitivity, scroll wheel and double click speed. You can also change the polling rate in here. And lastly you can change the function of the main buttons with the exception of the underside button for RGB. To wrap things up, there's a lot of things that this mouse does right, especially when it comes to the shape, the sensor and the cable. As far as I can see, the mouse does not lack any major features, and for the price that you pay, there is a good value proposition to be made here. I feel that making a few small adjustments, such as adjusting the side grips and the cable angle, can make the mouse feel that little more premium. Overall, the mouse has shown me that maybe not all budget mice are worth sleeping on, and that the quality you get at this price point has improved over the years. Whether or not you decide to spend that extra cash and purchase a more premium option, that's up to you. I hope that you've enjoyed this review. Don't forget to share and comment your thoughts below. I'm always happy to interact and answer any questions that you might have. And that's all for this time. Big thanks to Techware for sending out this mouse for review. I'll see you guys next time, and until then, farewell. Oh,